welcome back to my channel and today you're in luck because I'm going to be making some, well not I, but we're going to be making some chicken nuggets that are baked but they're going to be healthier for you and your family plus you know what you're putting into them and you can adjust whatever seasoning or spices that I have. You can put your own twist on it if you want. You know what your family likes and you know what you like. So come on in so I can show you what you're gonna be needing. You're gonna be needing one box, which is an eight ounce box of panko breadcrumbs. I like using these breadcrumbs guys, but you guys can use what you like. I feel like it gives it a more crispier flavor and texture. I'm using the whole wheat ones. Right here, I have four pounds of boneless skinless chicken breast and then my spices that are going to go i have two spices here one is going to be to season our panko and that's the seasoning and then this is going to go in the chicken breast so right here is for the chicken you're going to have one teaspoon of the goya seasoning mix and this is what the goya mixes it's adobo all-purpose seasoning. You can get this at the market, Walmart. I know we have these in our area, Walmart. And if all else fails, go to like a Hispanic store. And then you're also going to need one teaspoon of pepper and one-fourth teaspoon of seasoning salt. Now for your breadcrumbs, you're going to need one half teaspoon of paprika. I'm using smoked paprika. One teaspoon of salt. One half teaspoon of onion powder. One teaspoon of garlic powder. And one teaspoon of parsley flakes. They're kind of all mixed in already. You're also gonna need um, one, this is like a, I say like a medium, medium to large um, potato as well as a pretty good size carrot. What I did is I peeled and washed my potato and you're just gonna take it in kind of like bigger chunks with a knife and you're gonna place it in a pan and you're gonna kind of make your carrots um, maybe somewhat a little smaller because they take longer to cook than a potato does. So that way they can cook all evenly at the same time. So this is how I have my carrots and this is how I have my potato. Now I'm gonna put water and fill it up just above the carrots and potatoes and I'm gonna boil until softened. So now that I just took it off the, the fire and I dumped out all of the water, your vegetables are going to want to be like fork tender. See, just like that. The, the potatoes, see, they kind of like come apart and that doesn't matter because you want them soft. And now that it's fork tender, you're going to want to let your potatoes and carrots cool a little before you place it in with your chicken. So now we'll just wait till that cools. Potatoes are cooling down. You're going to want to take your box of panko and take your panko crumbs and put them in a separate bowl. I just dump them all in. Come on, little kiddos. Come out of there. And then all of the seasonings that I gave you at the beginning of this segment, you're going to place all of them in the same bowl as well. Then you're just going to want to give it a quick mix just to make sure everything gets incorporated into your bowl. Like I said, make this your own. This is your home. You know what your family likes. And I'm giving you a recipe that is delicious and tasty. Alrighty, so now those are in our bowl. Now that our potatoes and carrots are cooled, I'm gonna take half of them and place them into 
the food processor. If you don't have a food processor, I would recommend probably getting like ground chicken. I've never did it that way. I usually do it this way. So um, I can't tell you. I'm sure they'll turn out really good like that as well. So now I'm going to take half of my chicken as well and place it in there. I'm sure we could stuff it all in, but I won't do that. Then we'll be overflowing. Yeah, then we'll be overflowing. <laughs> too chunky so I'm going to grind it up a little bit more you want to make sure everything oh I forgot guys I'm pouring half of my mix in here as well half of your seasoning mix in the beginning yummy alrighty let's incorporate in now once your first batch is grinded, you're going to want to place it into a bowl or the bowl you had the chicken at. I just rinsed it out and placed the remainder of my chicken in with my other ingredients, the potato and carrot. Because it's all going to get mixed up together anyways at the end. Make sure you get all those little kids out. All that chicken nugget. All that chicken nugget. There's a few pieces, but that's okay. Now you're going to do the same and place the other half and the rest of the seasoning and the potatoes and carrots. Grind them up, baby. It's grind time. So guys, this is the second half of grinding my chicken. Oops, that blade fell out. Um, whoops, sorry. <laughs> this is a great time right now during this process is to add and sneak in any veggies that you want to get your kids to eat. This is a great time and a great way to do it because I guarantee you when you process all of those veggies in there and you mix them together, they're not going to notice that there's veggies in there. And I know because I have a picky eater, which now he's a teenager, Christian. <laughs> he normally like, uh, but I gotta sneak them in any way I can. That's right. So now that you mix everything up and get it fully incorporated, this is a good, useful two to have. It's a little um, like scooper, mini ice cream scooper. But this is a tiny one and it makes like, it's like a tablespoon. So if you don't have one of these, you can also use a tablespoon as well. So you, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna scoop it. a little bit of time but it's so worth it and like I said take that little extra time out I did two pans 
with the rack on and the reason why I put the rack on there is so that you can um, get it fully cooked evenly around it and I also did one without the rack that way I'll show you guys how it looks it only gets a little bit soggier on the bottom but I'll show you that once they're done and you're gonna take any oil of your choice and then you're just gonna lightly spray the top of each one see that's it it's better than deep frying them in oil that way you know what you guys want to put into it now i'm going to put it into a preheated oven at 375 for about 20 to 25 minutes minutes minutes, minutes depending on your oven because each oven cooks differently Okay, we just took these out of the oven and these are the ones on the rack see how they look on the bottom they come right off nice and golden brown and these are the ones that didn't have the rack on the bottom see how they're more brown on the bottom but they're a little bit soggy but not not very much they get a little burnt a little a little burnt no if you leave it on there and they'll take um about 20 anywhere from like 25 to a half an hour depending on your oven so now i'm going to take a couple mm. little camera guy that's a ranch you wanna... mustard ketchup I'm barbecue sauce mine. here camera guy which one do you want me to no, dip it go in go ahead i'm filming you do the honors okay i'm gonna that's go the for ranch. it mm. Mm, mm. inside yeah, boy. See, it's nice and tender inside with my mouth full. Try some of that mustard. I'm going to go for the mustard and ketchup. Double dipping. These are so good, guys, and they <laughs> kill that craving. Yeah, that's double dipping. It's my dip. Okay. It's mine to dip in. But this is a yogurt ranch that my Cody made behind the camera. Mmm. Okay, here. I won't be that rude. Thank you. So until next time, guys, try this recipe. It's really good. I know you'll enjoy it. I know your family will enjoy it. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more of these videos. And we'll be seeing you guys soon. Bye. Bye. Bye, 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 bye. Um.